This is Glambition Radio, episode number 239, with Mia Hewitt, author of Meant for More. Welcome to Glambition Radio. I am your host, Allie Brown. I'm an entrepreneur, mentor, investor, and mom of twins. I love thinking big, doing different, and exploring ideas that disrupt the status quo, especially when it comes to women, because we are rewriting the rules for leadership, business success, making money, and changing the world. And we're doing it with style. Let's go. Welcome to December. I know my kids could not wait to get the Christmas decorations up. We are very excited to have Daddy home. My husband, Brett, was in Australia for about a month. He was there visiting his grown son who got married. And, uh, you know, originally we were all going to go down and, you know, it it ended up just being this way. But I have to tell you, it it wasn't easy having him gone, but we also kind of needed a little break. Is that bad to say? Like, we've all had a lot of together time. (laughs) <laughs> since, since like March, right? So I know some of my friends are like, I'm kind of envious that you get that time. But it was uh, a really great month. I did some fantastic stuff with the kids. If you have not checked into my Instagram lately, that's really where I play most of the time personally, Allie Brown Official. I hope to see you there. And drop me a note. Tell us how you like the show. Tell me if you're seeing the posts. I think it's just important for everyone to stay in really positive communication right now, especially with all the current events and things we also see maybe coming over the next month or two. No craziness. Um, Just be ready for anything. You got to stay very grounded right now. Very tuned in to what you know is true. Quick shout out to two great reviews my team pulled for me. From Apple Podcasts. Speaking of positive communication, we love seeing these. I love seeing these, and it helps more amazing women discover the show. Five stars by Linda Lippin. She says, Allie has coached so many of my friends and colleagues, and they all have nothing but great things to say about her work. So when I heard about her free podcast, I had to listen. It's been a few years now, and I'm still listening. Allie asks the right questions, and I always draw useful pearls of wisdom from each episode. Thank you. And M. Del Soul One gives it five stars, says, inspiring. I followed Allie many years ago and rediscovered her work here. So great to discover her podcast and listen to women having inspiring, elevated conversations. Can't wait to listen to more. And you're going to love listening to today. My guest, Mia Hewitt, is author of Meant for More. And we had a really fascinating conversation on a framework that she calls aligned intelligence. It's a methodology that removes your blind spots, fear, anxiety, self-doubt, and helps you make better decisions to maximize your results in your career and your business. So this was a really perfect conversation at this time because all of this stuff is coming up right now to be healed for you for me, for everyone. And by the way, that's why a lot of people are losing their shit. Okay. Like, like, like everyone is on edge, especially if they have not done the personal work, you will notice there is an increasing divide in the people who are, you know, grounded, aware of what's going on. They may not be happy with things and and there's justifiable outrage, but you know, they're not going bazonkers. And then there's the people going bazonkers. And if you see those, a lot of times it's because there's stuff that they haven't dealt with themselves. Now look at that in a meta level. Countries, cultures, families, the world itself, all this is going on at so many different levels now. There's this intense quickening of this all happening. So I think conversations like these are important to look at both from your personal perspective and from a larger bird's eye view. So you're going to want to take some notes on this one. And a reminder that our show today is sponsored by The Trust. It's the private premier network for seven and eight figure women entrepreneurs. If you or another female leader you know is craving more powerful connections, more elevated conversation, and a modern platform for connecting with other high-performing women globally. Come have a look. It's jointhetrust.org. And I am hosting a special introductory 
call on Tuesday, December 8th at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, and you can learn more and apply for an invite at jointhetrust.org slash private invitation. I'll be hosting this call personally, walking you through all the benefits of joining us, everything we have going on for 2021, and you can decide if this is a great fit for you and your goals looking into the next year. Have a look at jointhetrust.org slash private invitation. Mia, I'd like to know where you are right now. Awesome. I'm in Boston, Massachusetts. How long have you been there? You know, I'm not from here. So I always feel like a, an outsider a little bit. I have to say that I'm actually from Florida and grew up in South America, but I've been in Boston now about like four years. Why? It's cold. It's so cold. I know. Everybody always asks me that, even the Bostonians. And I say, for a guy, like who comes oh, to Boston, but yeah. for a guy, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. I came here for a guy. I had met him, you know, four years, you know, now about, let's see, six years ago now. I met him six years ago and we used to date online and I met him at a master practitioner course. Not that I do that in my business, but I met I met him at that type of an event. Mm. Oh, so he was like into personal yes. growth. Yes. And, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he was so amazing. And we dated long distance for two years. And he kept asking me, aren't, you know, why don't you just come live here? Why don't, you know, my kids are grown. My youngest is um, 26. So he was like, you know, my, my daughter's still young because he was divorced. And, mm. and so- Hence how I ended up in Boston. You took one for the team. <laughs> I did. I really did. <laughs> well, you better get him back to Florida, especially I'm liking Florida's, uh, you know, attitude lately too. You know, they're not going to be locking yeah. down too quickly. They're a little more yeah. relaxed. So yeah, I lived in Boston eight years and I loved it, but just not built for the cold. Not built yeah, for the cold. So happy to have you on because I was digging into a bit of your stuff and it's, it's refreshing to see a coach who has a very clear methodology. And I think mm. what we see out there, there are a lot of people who are good coaches, mm -hmm. but when you have something that's so clear and you're, you're very specific in how you help people, it really is attractive. I mean, nice. for your business and, you know, people want to know more. So I'd love to actually start, I usually start with how someone got started, but I'd love to jump into your aligned intelligence. I'd love to hear a bit more of that. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it actually started with myself, right? Like and anything, right? I started, I was struggling constantly with feeling like with my emotions. I just either felt like I either had to shut them down. I felt controlled by them. So I often felt like either like I had to just wheel them in and say nothing or not express anything, or I would feel very reactive. And I couldn't understand why that was. So here I had, you know, I grew up poor and then I went on to build um, multi-million dollar company. And I couldn't understand why I still felt so inadequate. Like I knew like I was meant for more, but I struggled with these fears and insecurities and these emotions that just constantly took me out. And so the, the methodology that what I came up with, I tried everything. I I've worked with so many of the best and the best in the industries with different methodologies and nothing would work for me. And I couldn't understand, I really thought there must be something seriously wrong with me because why can I not get this to work? And then what I found was on a deeper level that we all have had a trauma, like of some sort. And I, I know that sounds so weird sometimes to people because it's like trauma. I've, I had a good life. But what I mean by that is when I was like five years old, I remember like my father calling me. And I became really nervous because I was like, why is he calling me? And he was the person that scared me the most in my household. Like I always felt like I had to walk on eggshells around him. Our generation, that was like, the, that was what dads were, right? Right. <laughs> like, don't piss off your father. Yes. Your father's coming home. I remember yes. that. You know what? He wasn't a bad guy, but you just, there was this kind of like, um, yeah, there's there always that attitude about the dad. 
Yes, that's exactly what I that's exactly what I remember feeling. And so I always felt like I kind of had to walk on eggshells around him and I wasn't really quite sure what was going to set him off. Like he mm-hmm. was a super happy guy, but then he could be super angry. Mm-hmm. And so that feeling of like never really quite feeling how to fit in with him, I just started like that's how it all started for me and then of course in my life we lived on a farm and he thought that I was completely like the weakest kid, which I was in the sense of, as far as he was afraid that I was somebody who wouldn't stand up for myself because I was very shy at five years old. So he was going to toughen me up. And so the long story short is he, you know, calls me down, calls me, you know, wants to, says he wants to spend time with me. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is something really special. He actually wants to spend time with me. And he takes me outside and he asked me, which one is your favorite chicken? Oh, no. Yes. D- no, 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 no. Okay, you should be scared of your dad. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, my yes. God. No. Did you have to kill your chicken? Yes. That's exact. So, so for me, what happened, and this is the fascinating thing, is even though mine can sound traumatic to somebody else, I'm going to share some examples of like what it would be like for somebody else that feels this way. But when that moment happened and that happened, I literally went into my mind, spin out of control. I got so confused about what was happening. I had never seen, I didn't even know that could happen. And I was blindsided. And so in that moment of like trying to see like, what can I do to stop this from happening? I froze and my mind went blank. And then what I learned that that moment, my life forever changed in that moment, in that experience, what I, what I made that mean that day was people don't mean what they say. They're going to trick you. The world is not a safe place. You can't rely or trust on anyone. Not only your father can you not trust, but I felt also that God had forsaken me. Like I felt like my life was fine before that. And then afterwards it was like everything changed. So I had this huge, at five years old, I vowed to never have this happen to me again. And I built these walls around myself and I didn't want to let anyone in for years and even decades. And I didn't understand how all of that would then cause me to struggle in everything, everything in business, right? All my life, then I started struggling from inside of this. So the way that I like to say it is that every single person has had something that happened to them when they were young and they've been carrying around this for the rest of their life. So like consider we're all just wounded children walking around in adult bodies. I'm still stuck on the chicken. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> like I can't, you can't get me past the chicken. I that's, know. that's what they, you know, that's how they raised Nazi, young Nazi soldiers. They had them raise pets and then yes. have to kill them. Like that's, yes. that's, that's a sign. Your dad did a psyop on you. Yes. And so like feel this because there was a guy who recently, you know, he had come to, he said, oh, I went to a hypnotist to see if I could find my trauma before I came to you. I'm like, oh, you don't need to do that. It takes me seconds seconds to find people's trauma. I'm so, I'm such an expert at it, but I, but I love that the fact that he thought that he needed to do that, but here's why I'm going to show you this. This is something he never saw before. So what he was struggling with as an entrepreneur is he would have those real, like he would make money and lose it all, make money and lose it on. So, you know, that typical roller coaster, never getting it to be consistent. So when I took him back to just, you know, find where that is, because it's always in the subconscious mind, right? It's in the feeling mind. That's why it doesn't make logical sense, because it's go- you will feel for it, not think for it. And so that's why they always miss it and why nobody could see what it was really stopping me, hmm. no matter what I tried. So I took him back and just asked him questions inside of the feeling mind. And here's what he uncovered. When he was four years old, he had come home from preschool and he said, daddy, 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 look, I colored in the lines. And his father looked at the piece of paper and he turned to his son and said, wow, I guess you're not, you're, you don't have much of an imagination. That is what his biggest trauma was from that day forward. That's why trauma is in the eye of the beholder Mm -hmm. from that day forward. He made a decision that 
he couldn't trust, right? Like that whatever he did wasn't going to be good enough. He couldn't trust other people. He couldn't even trust his father. And he would then vowed to, he put a wall up and then he vowed to, from that day forward, he was going to do whatever it takes to try to win back that love. But no matter what he does, it's never good enough. Oh God, this is, okay, this is, this is making me neurotic now as a parent. Yeah, <laughs> right. Right? Like all you parents listen, I'm like, for God's sake, like you're always worried you're going to say something. It's going to screw them up for life. Mia, mm. you got to help us pass this now. Now I'm terrified. I will. I, I will. I will. I will. Because here's the thing. It's not that. So the trauma happens in every, every child, every young person has a wound. And like Oprah always says, she has a, a quote that she said, trauma leaves a hole in the soul. And unless you fix the trauma that has caused you know, that was caused, then you're like, you're working on the wrong thing. And so for what we have to do, it's not that the trauma, not, it's not that we're going to stop the trauma from happening. Cause even if we were the most perfect parents, then what happens is they'll go in school and the trauma will happen with a teacher or with another sibling, like another person, or sometimes it happens even with another sibling. So we don't stop the trauma, but what, here's why it won't become a thing here's where we're going to help you is if I had had back then, even my mom, even if that had happened, because my dad thought he was doing the right thing. Like he really thought in his mind that that was going to toughen me up and it was going to prepare me better for the world. And I have absolutely no judgment anymore. I've really released all that trauma. So I'm completely free of it. But here's the thing that really is behind all of this. What we really need to do is know how to process our emotions. Because the, the interesting thing, Allie, and I know like you, you, you'll feel this, it's like we understand from a physical perspective that if we eat a ton of food and drink a lot of things, and if we didn't pee and poop, we would literally die. The toxins would stay in our body and we would die. But we don't understand as human beings that this is the same thing that happens when we don't process or know how to process our emotions, right? So the, the key that we want to always give our children and give ourselves is how do we process emotions so that we allow them to feel expressed, right? So they get to really feel heard. They get to say, you know, I feel sad. I feel upset. I'm angry. I feel hurt. Like they get to express how they're feeling so that they don't wallow in them or feel controlled by them or feel like they're wrong for having them. So the key is, is to allow them to express emotions, but then to now we take those emotions and we actually want to be able to sort so we want to be able to look at them and go, oh, well, what are you making that mean? Because the only reason the emotion comes is the emotion comes as a result of the thoughts we're making something mean, right? So once they can see like, well, what were you making that mean? In fact, I'll share a story because one of my clients said, I use this on my child and it worked. <laughs> and I'm like, I know it works. It works with any human being and imagine what it does in business. <laughs> But I, she said, I used it because she had a, her son was four years old. And I see a lot of this. This happens so much. I have a lot of entrepreneurs who, when they were like four years old, their favorite, like this one woman's coming to my mind right now. Her mom took her with her, took the dog to the vet. And then they got back in the car and were, were leaving. And she was like, well, we're just... I don't remember the dog's name, but where is the dog? And she was like, oh, no, he's not coming. And she's like, what do you mean he's not coming? And because she didn't know how to express and what was happening to her, that was her trauma, right? Like she couldn't, she held on to it. So she made it mean that people, like people, the things you love will go away. And so inside of that, this is what this one, this other entrepreneur did. She said, I use this on my son. Her son had had that same trauma. Like they had moved away and they left the dog because where they were going, the dog couldn't be there. And so they hadn't explained it to the son. So when he was acting up, he would be very emotional. Anytime his sister would take any of his toys, he would make it mean like, no, no, no. Like it's going to go away and he's not going to get it back. 
So, so we helped her through that. And then there was a situation inside of the bathtub where he would always scream and cry when the, when the water hit him. And so she said, I asked him, well, what are you making that mean? She goes, in the past, I would just be like, you're fine. Stop crying. You're fine. Stop crying. And she goes, but because of what I've learned from you, she goes, I asked him, well, what are you making it mean? And he says that it's going to hurt me when it gets in my eyes, it's going to hurt. And she said, okay, so what if it just hurts a little and then you were able to wipe it away? How would that feel that you were able to, to be able to, that you're capable of actually wiping it away? Oh, well, then I would feel good. Awesome. And she goes, that's all it took for him. <laughs> to stop crying. It's that processing. Does that make sense? Like when we can actually really be with it and get curious about our emotions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's a fight. You know, there, there's some people you could see that they get it. They can step back and observe and be conscious and imagine okay. learning that now from a young age. Right. Because most of us didn't learn that until I know say thirties is when it starts like clicking in exactly. uh, for me. So when did this transition into you wanting, you know, th obviously th this is something that kind of gained on you over your lifetime. You started to become more aware of it. Where was that turning point for you and realizing, oh, this is the key? Oh, yes. So I had I had I worked with a like a best-selling author, an amazing, you know, coach and what he was giving me and told me to do, it wasn't working. And I was very coachable. And the turning point was he got so frustrated with me. And this is, this is a really good thing. I'm not using this as a judgment. It was a really good thing. He got so frustrated with me. He said to me, Mia, you need, need to go in your room and lock the door and not come out until you figure this out. And at that moment, I was pissed. I was pissed because I had paid him $50,000. You know, I really wanted the result and I was mad. And I remember like it was it, but it took that alley. It took me going, okay, what if it's not out there? Like I keep thinking someone's going to show it to me. Like I kept thinking it was outside of me. And so where the turning point became was that was the day that I just became so obsessed with uncovering it, that I no longer, I stopped looking for it outside. And I started really getting curious and really starting to like go, well, what does this mean? Why do I do that? When I'm reacting like this, why do I do that? And so the process was actually developed as a way for me to be able to sort my emotions and be able to see, because the fascinating thing is, and how we sort is like, this is like the, when we pull back, when we pull back out of ourselves and we actually become a neutral observer, right? When we can pull back, learn that muscle and how in business, you, you know how this works. When in business, when we pull back, we get to see big pictures. So we get to see the whole machine and like, where are the holes in the buckets that are not working, right? Like where are the cylinders that are not firing? Well, that same habit of pulling back and observing, self-observing, and then detaching, letting go of all judgment, letting go of all kinds of attachment, because all fear is a result of an attachment, period, period. There is no such thing as fear without attachment. So all fear is just a result of an attachment. Well, when we pull back, when we go way up and really detach without an attachment, we actually then get to neutrality. We can actually see the clarity that we need to really see what we need to do next. So that from that clarity, then we can define our intention. Well, how do I want to feel instead? What, what would I be feeling instead if this was not there? And so the one other piece that I put in between is I like to sort it because what happens is every single uncomfortable, disliked emotion is the doorway to your biggest transformation, right? Because when we can look at where that trigger is and instead of making ourselves wrong about it and beating ourselves up, which is what we did to survive, if we can just look at it and then pull back and then go, what am I making this mean? Like, what, what does this really mean? Now, I'm going to say this. It's always, 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 1,000% 1, 
attached to our trauma. Like no matter, it doesn't matter. I'm 52 now. The, the, the decision I made during my trauma, when that happened, I made the decision that my voice, like what I have to say doesn't matter because he wouldn't stop. And like what I have to say doesn't matter. I'm not important to this day. The number one trigger like that, that I can feel it will come up is if I, if my partner in any way doesn't allow me to speak or doesn't allow like that, my voice doesn't matter. That is going to literally fire, which is cool because then I can go, Oh, there you are, my friend. Like, this is my, like, this is, there's, there's my long lost friend of like, that's what I'm looking for. And then I can put in and ask him, Hey, I really would love for you to just hear me. You don't have to agree with me, but I would like you to really hear me and acknowledge back what I'm saying. And when he does that, there's no, even if he disagrees with me, I don't care that he disagrees, but then my voice gets heard and I'm back into neutrality, which brings my emotions right back into homeostasis, right? Like I'm back in alignment, right? And so that that ability to be able to pull back then ask, what am I making this mean? And then sort. What's Anytime there's a negative emotion, it means every single time that there's a misunderstanding or a misconception that I've attached to it. And so as soon as I sort it and go, okay, what's the lie and what's the truth? And when I can see the lie and see the truth, that always sets me free. The truth always sets you free. It will totally free you, get you right back into neutrality, back into alignment. And now from that neutrality, it's like, okay, so now what's my intention here? What do, how do I want to feel instead? And now I'm back in power. Can can this be, I'm just kind of getting my head around. Yeah, sure. So this, is, this works in, intrinsically so well at a personal level. Can this be also applied to like your business or even the state of, you know, the country right now at a meta level? Yes, it really, it really can. Because here's the thing at a, at a meta level, like what you're saying, it's like, the truth is we all live in the same world, yet each of us individually moves along our own lifeline. And what I mean by that, that's not a, that's not a negative thing. What I mean by that is our own lifeline based on our own trauma and the perceptions that that trauma created. So our whole world, even though we're in the same world, we're in individual perceptions. So what I mean by that is why the most successful people are successful regardless of the economy, regardless of the environment, is you will find that inside of that, it's because they made a decision that they would not be defined by an environment. So the more you let a single belief define you, the less capable you are at adapting when a circumstance or life, something outside of you shifts. And so the key to that is when we really understand in the way this really works. So let me back up a bit and it's going to make a lot more sense. So when we understand the relationship between our conscious mind and our subconscious mind, So our conscious mind is what generates ideas, right? That's where the ideas come from, our desires inside. Oh, I want to do this. The subconscious mind is what takes that idea based on the emotions we apply to it, like the meaning we gave it. So if we believe it and it feels good, then that becomes into our subconscious mind and it gives it form and an expression. Like we'll start behaving that way. If that idea, that conscious mind, that idea actually feels negative. Like we want something, but we don't believe that we're capable. So in business, it comes inside of a lot of people feel, right? And this is where the trauma gets all connected, is one of the biggest concerns that people have is being seen that they're afraid they're going to be judged or rejected, which comes from that childhood wound. Right. So the most common reasons people fail, either fail to introduce their idea, product, services, or change their their products and services based on the economy, is they're fearful of the rejection or judgment they might receive. Which is again 
it's inside of they're afraid of the way they're going to feel about that. Right. It's a feeling. Yeah, you're right. It's not about them actually doing it, is it? It's about how you will, how it will make you feel. Feel. And because we're so afraid of our feelings, because we've never been taught what to do with them. It's like, well, when you feel that way, they feel out of control with them. So like to put it back into the meta perspective of where this affects the entire world is never before in a time right now, have we been hit with where we have to face our feelings. They're, the feelings, we are so feeling exhausted by our feelings, but we don't have this, we haven't been taught the skills of how to process them so that we can then bring us ourselves back into alignment. And so when we can, we can really get and understand that. So we understand that the relationship between the conscious mind and the subconscious, think about this inside of the trauma then. When we're little kids, the conscious mind is taking what it's perceiving as an idea, giving it a meaning, and then it suppresses it into the subconscious by feeling, but it doesn't matter if it's true or not. Mm -hmm. It will take that and make it true because we said so. So that's the cool thing is about the subconscious is that's a great thing, right? Because when we wake up every morning, we don't have to learn how to walk all over again because the subconscious mind knows it as a pattern. Well, here's where the power comes. When you understand that, when you understand that to create anything you want in life, you're going to have to consciously choose what you want, begin to feel it and imagine it in such a way that it becomes a feeling place. You impress it yourself into the subconscious mind as a feeling. And you live from that feeling place. And then you take the behaviors associated to that. You will reach your result every single time. Mm. So it's kind of reverse engineering it. Yes. Yes. Because the truth is, which is what we've never been told, which I, that's why I wrote the book. I wrote the book for everyone who wanted the, you know, it's the book that I wish somebody would have given me in my 20s that if they could have told me, how does the world really work? And how do, how do we really get what we want? Mm -hmm. And so that's the book I wrote uh, so that everybody could understand that. Because the truth is that the way we get what we want, it's everything is working inside out. So however we're feeling, like another way to say that is, we can't think greater than how we feel. Mm. We yeah. can't think greater than how we feel. So when we understand that it's all in the feeling, that it's all in the feeling, and that the subconscious mind doesn't contemplate whether what we're feeling is a fact or not, it will accept and assume whatever you feel is true and given an expression by a behavior. So when we understand that, that everything we want must be first created inside our mind and in our feelings, and then held to until that becomes a natural state of being and taken action from there, there's nothing we cannot have. So another way of saying that is when we change the way we feel, we change our life. Who's the book for in particular? I wrote it for people just like myself who always knew that they were meant for so much more, but they couldn't stop secret. Like they always felt like they were struggling emotionally, either feeling so out of control with their emotions or feeling like they had to walk on eggshells and didn't know, you know what to do with their emotions or they were wallowing in them. So either way, whether they numb themselves from feeling or whether they wallowed in them, the book is written for those who know that they were meant for more, but have never understood the way out. Mm -hmm. And especially women or especially business owners or? Yes, I do business owners and I get, I actually love doing men as well, but I get about 80% women. Yeah. And toy, right? I, I just do naturally, but I love the men that come in, the brave men that come into it because like, I love the, you know, men bring an interesting balance to all of the women in my, there's a very interesting thing that that dynamic does. So I really love that they do that. And just to put it into another realm of it is, um, one can say that the male 
is the realm of the mind that is conscious, right? It's very directive. And the female is in the realm of the subconscious, mm-hmm. the very feeling mind. So the, there's a really beautiful harmony that happens when we have both. Yeah. When you look at the timeline of business as well and how, you know, really when we look at kind of our industries in the last 20 years and let's say, you know, maybe 30, when you think of like personal brands and coaching, that'll kind of kind of started, I'd say the 90s is where we started yes. seeing some of that, right? When you think of like the Tony Robbins mm-hmm. and the personal, and the stuff's been around for a long time before, but yes. really started to gain popularity. Yeah. And the personal brands and coaching and personal development and this stuff had starting to escalate, combining that with the ease of starting a business. Mm -hmm. And how these trends have aligned now and now the great awakening and now this new merging of the divine feminine and divine masculine, by the way, a lot of people are talking about the divine feminine coming back. But by the way, this is also about now we're meeting the divine masculine because there's been this outdated, everything you see, oh gosh, this could take two days to explain, but I'm, hang on everybody. I'm getting somewhere. Hang on. Everything we're seeing right now, right. And, and I'm getting a little meta, but the disruption of systems of institutions, you know, we're recording this mid November. We don't know what's going to be going on the next few months. I just know I have two months of food and (laughs) (laughs) like, like I am bunkered down, you know, I'm just like, you know, I just want to feel good, you know, in case I don't need to leave the house for a while. Yeah. So, so all this stuff's happening, but actually, you know, that's where I'm kind of connecting the dots with what you are teaching is that this is just so relatable on so many levels because the men are experiencing this too, and they need help processing this too. So you have the men and women, and then you have the business owners on top of that, because it's the best personal development tool ever is starting a business because brings this to the surface. And then I'm just so excited for you because I'm like, this is happening in the the country and it's happening on the planet. (laughs) And like maybe the universe has trauma and needs healing. I just think, I think you're onto something that's going to be kind of layered on top of each. There's going to be layers to this and it's really fascinating. That's what I've been percolating on. Once yeah. I had to, I had to get past the chicken. I'm still thinking about the chicken. I know, I'm so I sorry. Know. No, no. So no, yeah, okay. I need to let that go. And I eat chicken, but I mean, it's just a sad story. So once I got yeah. past that though, it's fascinating because what you're talking about really can be related to on mm-hmm. so many levels. And I'm sure you see that unlocking. There's almost different layers of the onion, right? There that is. get peeled away. There really is. And that's why I always say to people, it takes me eight weeks. It takes me eight weeks to help somebody completely unravel their consciousness, like what's in the subconscious and bring it to the conscious and allow them to awaken in awareness and understanding of really seeing not only how the trauma got created, the perception of it, we heal that, we help them free themselves from it, but then also inside of that, how they actually function as like how they really create the lives that they really want. And what happens is their their old perceptions of reality lose their grip and it causes a permanent paradigm shift and it's permanent, which is why people are often like, oh, is this just like a, do you just do meditation? No. And I don't have anything against meditation, but this is actually, it literally creates a permanent paradigm shift, which then inside of that, it has you go back home. This is the easiest way for me to explain it. And that's why it's brilliant what you're saying, because it is a layering in the sense of, it's like a recipe, right? If we had never baked an apple pie before, and we were going to, we wanted to bake an apple pie, well, just the awareness that we needed apples wouldn't get us an apple pie. And so it's very much the same as that, meaning it's not one ingredient It's knowing the exact process, which is what that formula does, that aligned intelligence method, that it literally strips away layer by layer each piece of the ingredients for the recipe, which then returns you back to the truth of who you really are, which is, you know, our natural state of clarity, well-being. It's who you were before the trauma. So like feel that, like peace was easy for you, like clarity was easy. No one was confused before the trauma, right? The trauma creates the confused state, right? And so like then it it brings you back to, to really being able to consistently and predictably coach yourself back into 
and through any obstacle so that you return to your own inner wisdom, your own inner guidance and your own inner truth. Mm. So where can we learn more about you, Mia and the book? Yeah. Well, for your people only, like I'm going to give a link. You got, it's just, you can get the book for free. It's an ebook. I'll give it to you for free. I mean, of course it's always available on Amazon, but for you, they can get it for free. They can just go to Mia meant for more book.com. So it's Mia meant for more book.com. And the password they will use, cause it's not available anywhere else is just use the word capital F, but free book, all one word, free book, capital F. And they can just download it for free. Fantastic. Okay, great. That's always fun. So to bring this around the bend, let's share three great pieces of advice for all the women listening around the world right now. Mm, I love that. So the first thing that I would say, and I wish somebody would have told me this, vulnerability is not weakness. It is the way to your true power. So that's the first thing that I wish somebody would have told me a long time ago, because I was always looking to try to not feel vulnerable, which is what made it worse. (laughs) So vulnerability is not weakness. It's the way to your true power. All judgment is a projection of what I don't want to own within me. So therefore, every single uncomfortable emotion is the doorway to where your biggest transformation is located. And the last thing that I would say is, since we can't think greater than how we feel, you really want to master learning how to process your emotions so that you're no longer controlled by them or feel like you have to wallow in them, but they become your greatest source of power. I love that. Mia, this has been fascinating. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on, Ellie. It's great to have this conversation with you. Great. We'll be in touch. All right. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Glambition Radio. If you enjoyed the show, make sure you subscribe so you automatically get new shows every week. And I'd love if you left us a review. We are on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and other platforms. And I'd love to hear from you. Come join the conversation online. You'll mostly find me on Instagram, but also on Facebook, Twitter, and more. Just head to AllieBrown.com. You will find them all there. And you can also learn about upcoming opportunities to meet in person. Glambition Radio is the elevated conversation for women leaders, and I'm honored you've tuned in. Thank you.